All right. So as you can see, I put up the solutions to boxes two and three. All right. So you can look through this and you can find the surface area and volume for both boxes just to check your work. Moving on to the next section. All right. So in our investigation, what we're basically trying to do is we're trying to find out how do we get the volume of a cylinder. So we know how to get surface area. We know how to get volume of a rectangular prism. So now we're going to start with how do you get volume of a cylinder. All right. So what the, on the handout that you're looking at, what you basically see is they're giving you three stages that would basically help you find the volume of a cylinder. And so step one is to trace the base. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this screen where I basically have two cylinders that I have basically traced the base. All right. And so the question is, Okay, I traced the base, so now what do I do with it? Okay, how do I figure out where to go from here? So, the question that I would first start with is, how do we get the area of this? So, how do we get the area of a circle? And if you remember, the formula for that is pi r squared. And that will give you the area of a circle. All right, so... Unfortunately, though, we don't know what the radius is. So what can we figure out? All right. What we're going to basically do is we're going to draw the diameter. Remember, the diameter is from one side of the circle to the other, the longest part of it. So we're estimating that it's right about there. All right. And what we're going to do is we know each of these cubes, well, at least you do now, is one inch by one inch. All right. So what we'd basically do is we'd take a ruler and we would measure from one side to the other in inches. And what you would f come out with is four inches long. Okay. So four inches is what? Is it the radius? No, it's the diameter, because it's going all the way from one side to the other. So, 4 inches equals the diameter. However, what we need is we need the radius. So how do we get the radius given the diameter? So what we have to do is, if you remember, 1 half the diameter equals the radius. So I'm going to take 1 half of 4, and that should give me my radius. So my radius is 2. All right, so once I have my radius, now I can find my area. So I'm going to go back to my diagram. And how many cubes would fit in one layer? Well, now we know that that's basically asking us what is the area of the bottom of the cylinder. So area equals pi r squared. So, area equals 3.14 times, we just said that the radius was 2, correct? 2. So, 2 squared. And if you remember, r squared, and I'm just making little notes on this, r squared means r times r. So, our area is 3.14 times 4. So our area equals 12.56. All right. So we've traced the base. We found how many cubes fit in one layer of the shape. So we have our area of the bottom. So now what we have to do is, looking at the picture, we know how many cubes are right in here. That's basically one layer. And the question is saying, how many layers would it take to fill the cylinder? Well, according to our diagram, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, it's seven. So the height of this is seven inches tall, OK? So that, what that basically means is that there is basically a 
or roughly 12.56 cubes in every single layer. And there's seven layers in total. So all we're going to do is 12.56 times 7. So that's 87.92 square inches. All right, so the formula to actually get the volume, this is our volume. Remember, volume is how many cubes fill up an object. We just figured out in every layer, this 12.56 times seven layers, will give me 87.92 inch, inch cubes that are inside that cylinder. That is the volume. So the formula to get the volume for any cylinder is you take the area of base times the height of your cylinder. And that will basically give you the volume. So it's going to be important for you to remember that. Um, it's a pretty simple enough thing if you can just visualize what it is that you're trying to do. So what we're going to do is in the next exercise, we're going to do a couple of examples.